Yesterday, I asked you to name this drawing. Let's see what your answers were. Jason Funderburker. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a funny minority. <laughs> well, those were the only two submissions we got for this episode of Lawai, but the video's not 10 minutes yet, so we're going to have to do something else. So, let's just read some comments and see if we get any good ideas. Uh, these are I've I've seen all of these. Ooh, here's a new one from Lucky Fan what, Emery Giss Gischer, em Emery Gischer. He asks, lockdown theory when? Well, guys, looks like it's time for a film theory. Cue the intro, Matt Pat. So a lot of you guys are going to be confused initially because today's video is an analysis and theory on the play Lockdown by playwriter Douglas Craven. Basically, Emery, he starred as Mark in this play and he, bringing home the script, allowed me to look through it and the ending is sort of ambiguous and I was like, hey, what if we did a film theory on it? And he was like, <laughs> I've done a lot of joking so far, but we're actually going to sort of try to analyze this play. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to, I'm, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it kind of phony for my, for my phony friends that are watching the video. <laughs> I hate my life. So basically, I don't expect any of you guys to have seen the play besides Emery and like two other people. I'm just going to sort of quickly summarize the play. Uh give you an overview and then we can go into the analyzing and theorizing aspect, okay? Basically, play starts off, uh, school's at a lockdown for what people are assuming is a shoot active drill, or they don't know if it's a drill, that's sort of the premise of the whole play, is not knowing whether or not there's an active shooter and what you're supposed to do in that situation. So it, it was pretty, I mean, all jokes aside and everything, I did enjoy the play. I mean, it was kind of like, it, it, it felt good for what it was. That's what I'm trying to say. So it starts with the students arguing with the teacher about just everyone getting stressed out. Um, not really much happens for, the, for a while. Um, just this, there's a lot of conflict being built up among the students and I'm gonna go into the more important ones later But for right now just the vague thing. There's just some conflict between the students and between the teacher the teacher is trying to follow strictly what the book says and the students are trying to sort of just do their own thing There's one really cynical kid that keeps saying how they're gonna die then basically the announcements keep coming on saying basically repeating the thing of oh this is a drill teachers refer to page whatever on your handbook basically they just sort of argue and run around for a while in their little classroom and then a ninth grader is in there for some reason like the teacher sort of scooped her in before the drill started or whatever and then the sort of ringleader of the we want to leave half of the class is a kid named Adam, who is a very important aspect of this theory, by the way. And he sort of makes a attempt to push past the teacher, but then panicking, I assume, the ninth grade girl just sort of runs out of the door during the struggle. And so like the teacher manages to get everyone else to like settle down. So then the teacher is like, oh shoot, and sort of just runs after the ninth grader and leaves the students alone in the class. So now they're alone in the classroom and so now they have no idea what to do. And a lot of time goes by, they sort of talk about stuff, they try to relieve each other of the tension, they sort of try to have decent conversations, but at the in the end it always sort of reverts back to this fear of, of not knowing, I guess. 
So basically they're just waiting for a while for the teacher to come back and several hours go by. Oh, and then after a while, uh, a figure passes by the hallway and the play notes actually say it is very important that the figure um, not have an obvious gun. So it's pretty unknown stuff, you guys. Fast forward a bit, the announcement system sort of like fails. Like, the announcements have been continuing, just repeating the same thing. But this time, uh, it says there's a muffled sound, and there's no evidence at all that any harm has come to the office staff. And it says there are some mysterious sounds. The microphone being dropped? And it says the PA goes dead, all the students improvise panicked reactions. And then everyone starts freaking out says there are footsteps again, the shadow moves across the window. This time it is more menacing, but again, it might be a police officer. So then it says the students huddle together, the shadow passes in front of the door. Then this is important. Hey, get your thinking caps on here, folks. There is a knock at the door. The students try to quiet themselves, comfort one another. The shadow tries the doorknob, then moves off. So then they're just like, what do we do? So there's just more conflict going on. Finally, it goes Adam, who as previously mentioned is the character that was for sort of leaving the class and going to going off on their own to try to be safe on their own. And referring to Adam, he stands up and places his hand on the doorknob. Suddenly the hall light flicks off. Sarah cries out. The others react. We hear footsteps approaching more slowly this time. We see students huddling together, hunted. That's, that's, that's the word. That's the word they used. It's important later, hunted. Stage lights begin to fade. And then Sarah goes, could be anybody out there. Then there is a knock at the door. Adam moves away. The remaining lights favors Sarah. It could be anyone. Blackout. And then it says, end of play, which could be abbreviated to ew. That was just a bit of, lightheartedness on that ambiguous ending. On the surface, there might not be that much to analyze per se, other than that ending. So the overarching question is, was there a threat? I don't wanna say the S word on YouTube, I'll get shut down. So that's the overarching question. Was there someone there? Or was it just a drip? Well, I can confidently answer that, but I would also like to do you one better and tell you that there's much, much more than just that to be answered. I would like to suggest that Adam is the main character of this play and that the ninth grade girl is in fact the daughter of a terrorist organization. Think that's a stretch? Well then stay tuned, buddy boy, cause we're, we're going full theory mode. Put on your GT Live hats. Go wear your, your theorist merchandise, cause oh boy, are we, are we going in on this one, you guys. I took way too long. We're at the 15 minute mark of raw footage. Oh boy, editing is fun. Hey guys, welcome to day two, take two. It's... I'm having a blast, you guys. Recording YouTube videos is so fun. <laughs> so first I'm gonna get the overarching question out of the way. I'm gonna explain the surface level questions first and then I'm gonna go into the deeper, more theorizing aspects. So first, was there a threat? Yes, there most definitely was a threat. And here's how I know. On page 19 of the script, yeah, I'm, I, I know those parenthetical citations. You'll probably see some, some sort of citation on the screen. <laughs> so anyway, page 19, Chelsea is one of the girls that's trying to call people um, to, figure out what to do or at least what's going on. And so finally someone gets the bright idea of calling the police or the local police station and they actually pick up. And so I'm gonna read what, what happens. Hello, I'm a student at Dearborn CVI. Chelsea, Chelsea, my, 
These Canadian names, am I right? Chelsea Mahorn. We're inside. Our teacher's not here. Somebody ran and he followed her. She listens. I will, but we need help. Can you just tell us what's going on? Fine. Yes. She closes the phone. So then Mark asks, what did they say? And Chelsea replies, they wouldn't tell me what's happening. They just said we'd be okay. The police are outside. We need to just wait. Just wait. Can, can you repeat that, please? They wouldn't tell me what's happening. They just said we'd be okay. The police are outside. 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 That doesn't sound like something would happen during a drill. They're not inside helping with the drill. They are outside, implying they don't know what to do. I, I don't know what these Canadians are up to, but I personally have never been in a drill where the police wait outside. You'd think the police would be inside helping with the drill or else they wouldn't be there at all. That's just my American logic. Maybe maybe Canada's a bit different, but for all of my intents and purposes, that confirms there was something going on because why would the police be outside? Now skip ahead a bit. It's important to note that there are three instances where an unknown figure passes by the classroom. It says the first time they see an unknown figure, it's, we hear f the sound of footsteps in the hall. They are not particularly threatening, but they are unexpected and resound in the empty hallway. It passes by fairly quickly. Now it's important to also note that this happens almost directly after the fire alarm goes off. Stop. The camera just focused on H3, H3. <laughs> I am the star, okay? Camera, Ethan, you go go have a baby or something, Ethan. Why don't you go make a podcast with Post Malone or something, Ethan? So this happens directly after the fire alarm was pulled, which we could assume is part of the drill to see if any of the students sort of fall for the bait and go out into the hall. But it kind of seems like a lot. You know, because they already have all the announcements going on. They already have the whole school on lockdown. And apparently the police are outside. So a fire alarm on top of all of that seems kind of suspicious. I'm not going to lie. So it's important to note that pulling the fire alarm to lure out students, uh, that's something the actual school should actually do in real life, like, recent things as well. So I think it's kind of a stretch to say that that was just part of the drill. I think with all, with everything else on top of that, that points to there being a threat. So now I'm gonna try to give a rundown or a complete timeline of the play Lockdown. So this is my guess. A shooter arrives at the school, someone possibly a uh, student, staff, uh, principal, doesn't matter. Someone sees them before they even get into the school. Really early on, he gets spotted. The whole school goes in lockdown. Uh, principal immediately starts sending out the announcements. The teachers obviously know that this was not a scheduled drill. Try to keep everything under control. I don't think the shooter was prepared for this immediate response. And so he sort of just wanders around the hallway. Uh, I mean, this is really bad stuff, but this is just my theory of what the author was actually trying to communicate. Searches through the hallways, attempting to find any stray students. Well, I'll get into possible motives of the active shooter later, but for now, let's just say he was um, wandering around looking for stray students. And upon fi not finding any, as the lockdown had already started, he attempts to lure them out with a fire alarm, which I think, I would like to say uh, now that I do not think there were any casualties in this uh, play because they never hear any um, gunfire. There's never any like loud noises, there's nothing. And I think it's safe to say that there would be some sort of awareness that something was going on because even they call in another classroom at one part in the play and they don't mention anything. They don't know what's going on either. So I think it's pretty safe to say that no, at least no guns were fired. So uh, fast forward a little bit. The shooter is still walking around. The police have obviously been notified. Presumably they're outside planning their uh, strategy. He passes the classroom as he's searching for any stray students after pulling the fire alarm. And it's important to note what the play says. 
it actually says he was walking by slowly, as in sort of casually, which to me sort of confirms that, yes, this is, it's not a police officer and it's not someone like doing the drill because I feel like both of them would be sort of not as relaxed, I guess, especially if it was like a police officer or something. So I think this was them, again, searching for any remaining student. It passes away quickly because I think uh, the police, my best guess is that they take him out pretty quickly after entering the school. Presumably fairly silently as to not alarm the students and fairly efficiently because there's no sign of any sort of struggle. And so I would say it's pretty safe to assume they take him out quickly, whether that be physically like take him out or they just uh, uh, capture him. It's unclear based on the information of the play, but re-examining that ending, I very much believe that or the last two shadowy figures, because it, it says one, the shadow pauses in front of the door, uh, there's a knock. Now, why would a threat knock at the door? Uh, I mean, it doesn't really make much sense. I think that one was the policeman checking to see if anyone was in the room. And then it says the second one, which is the end of the play, the version of the play that Emery was in, uh, they opened the door, which the door was previously locked. So that would lead me to assume that they're, the person that opens the door has a key. Pretty, pretty obvious that was a teacher. Plus it's never specified how large the school is. So it is not that far fetched to believe that the classroom could be on the second floor, which is why they couldn't really hear anything. It, it, there's an infinite number of uh, possibilities just because of the lack of information the play gives us, which obviously is the goal of the play. It was to leave the audience and the actors in the space of unknowing, which is the theme of the play. So that's sort of the full timeline of events based on the information we are given. However, if you look at them closely, you start to see some strange things start to unravel. Things about Adam, the location of the play, and the timing of the play's release. And some of these things might seem far-fetched, but just stick with me. I think I'm on to something. This video was intended to be one concise theory as to explain the ending of lockdown. However, during my examination of character names, possible locations, I've stumbled upon some pretty interesting stuff that would probably double the length of the video if I included it here. So that's why I have decided to split this video into two parts. Oh no, Chance is selling out. He wants that ad revenue. 100% correct, but... <laughs> I'm not making another 40 minute video. I, I'm not editing that. I, I have a life. That, well, that, that, that's a lie. I have better things to waste my life on than editing a 40 minute video. Part two is when we're going into the crazy zone. We're going into the, going, we're going in deep. We're going to the, we're going to go to the dark web. <laughs> if the dark web is Google Maps, then yes. We're going into the dark web territory of Google Maps. That's right satellite mode. This is very different of my channel. Do not get used to this. Uh, I very much intend this to be a one-time sort of thing. Expect regular phony wacky videos uh, as soon as possible. It is summer, so hopefully I can be very active here over the summer. Oh, if you want to see your fan art behind me, I'm gonna take down like most of this stuff and I'm gonna start hanging up more of your fan art so be sure to send that to me via the discord or Instagram or whatever means you can find links to all of those will be down in the description please stay tuned for part two it should be out like a couple days after this it's this isn't this is more about I just don't want to make a super long video because no one's gonna click a 40 minute video I want I would rather this be a comfortable viewer experience for you guys thank you guys for watching be sure to see you in the next one goat horns this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life oh get it away from me man